She insisted upon diving in the pool. And when she hit the water, the wine hit her. Thanks to the glitz and glamour that the entertainment industry brings to celebrities' lives, Hollywood actors often end up addicted to alcohol. While some famous alcoholics manage to salvage their careers, many crumble under their alcoholism. Here are the 10 worst alcoholics of Hollywood's golden age. You're drunk. And you're crazy. And I'll be sober tomorrow and you'll be crazy for the rest of your life. What? Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed commanded the screen with his mesmerizing presence and captivated audiences with his portrayals of notorious villains. Known for his piercing blue eyes and facial scars from a drunken bar brawl, his exceptional acting talents were often overshadowed by his well-documented battle with alcoholism, a fact lamented by Ridley Scott and others. Reed won acclaim for his roles in the Three Musketeers trilogy, Oliver Twist, Treasure Island, and Gladiator, amassing an impressive filmography of 120 works. Tragically, his life was cut short after a drinking bout with Royal Navy sailors in a pub in Malta following the completion of his scenes for Gladiator. Despite Ridley Scott's insistence that Reed abstain from alcohol during filming, the actor's penchant for indulgence proved insurmountable. According to Sir Christopher Lee, Reed's behavior changed drastically after eight drinks, casting a dark shadow over the set. At the age of 35, Reed was involved in a nightclub brawl that left him with a scar that required 63 stitches. Initially fearing for his career, he persevered and continued to leave an indelible mark on cinema. Tragically, Reed's life came to an abrupt end after a night of heavy drinking, culminating in a fatal heart attack. Reflecting on his colorful life, Reed's only regret seemed to be that he did not empty every pub and indulge in every romantic encounter imaginable. Bernard Lee, with over half a century of acting experience and an impressive repertoire of over 100 film and television appearances, Bernard Lee has enjoyed a prolific career in the performing arts. His journey began at the tender age of six, treading the boards in stage productions before gaining widespread acclaim in the realm of cinema. His most notable role was undoubtedly that of M, the esteemed head of the British Secret Service, portrayed in 11 James Bond films. Lee's personal life, however, was marked by tragedy. The heartbreaking loss of his beloved wife in a house fire, coupled with a brutal mugging and mounting financial debts, plunged him into a spiral of depression and alcoholism. His addiction was reportedly so severe that he was confined to his dressing room during breaks in the filming of the Edgar Wallace television series to prevent him from consuming alcohol. Despite these preventative measures, Lee is said to have found ways to indulge his habit, reportedly getting someone to pass a straw through the keyhole so he could drink discreetly. Notorious heavy drinker Richard Burton even admitted that he couldn't match Lee's capacity for alcohol, as Lee once famously outdrunk him. Tragically, Lee succumbed to stomach cancer at the age of 73, probably aggravated by his excessive drinking. W.C. Fields W.C. Fields, born William Claude Dukenfield, remains a celebrated figure in American cinema. Renowned for his impeccable comic timing and cantankerous charm, he seamlessly blended his real-life persona with his on-screen characters, leaving an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Known for his distinctive nasal voice, curmudgeonly demeanor and love of drink, Fields rose to stardom in his mid-fifties, captivating audiences with his wit and charisma. However, his career and life were on the brink of collapse due to a crippling alcohol addiction. He was reportedly consuming staggering amounts of gin every day, leading to debilitating health problems such as delirium tremens. Paramount Studios dropped him in the midst of his struggles, threatening to derail his career entirely. Despite these challenges, Fields experienced a resurgence in popularity through radio, notably as a regular on The Chase and Sanborn Hour alongside Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. His comic banter with McCarthy became iconic and provided a lifeline during his darkest days. As his health gradually improved, Fields made a triumphant return to the screen. However, his battle with alcoholism continued, eventually leading to his admission to the Las Encinas Sanatorium. Tragically, on Christmas Day 1946, at the age of 66, he succumbed to a massive stomach hemorrhage, ending a legendary career marked by both triumph and struggle. Leonard Nimoy Leonard Nimoy, 
famously known as Mr. Spock, grappled with alcohol addiction during the filming of the iconic Star Trek series. Nimoy himself acknowledged that he turned to alcohol as a means of coping with the demanding and prolonged days on set. William Shatner, his co-star, observed that Nimoy used alcohol as a shield against the overwhelming pressures of fame and what began as one drink escalated into a pattern of addiction, fueled by his predisposition towards addictive behavior. After the conclusion of filming for Star Trek, Nimoy sought help and underwent rehabilitation to confront his alcohol dependency. Despite his efforts to overcome this struggle, Nimoy ultimately succumbed to another habit, smoking, which claimed his life at the age of 83. His legacy as Mr. Spock endures, but his personal battles serve as a poignant reminder of the human struggles behind the iconic characters we admire. Frank Sinatra Frank Sinatra was widely regarded as a functioning alcoholic, with Jack Daniels being his preferred drink of choice. His signature concoction consisted of four ice cubes, two fingers of Jack, and a splash of water, served in the classic rocks glass. Rumors abound that he consumed an entire bottle of Jack Daniels daily, much to the astonishment of his doctor. Sinatra's life was a constant spectacle, embodying the mantra, the best is yet to come, wherever he ventured. However, his demeanor could take a sharp turn when intoxicated, often leading to confrontations with journalists or fellow actors. His ex-wife once recounted locking herself in their room upon seeing him drink gin, as it signaled a shift towards aggression. Sinatra, along with his close companions and select Hollywood elites, humorously dubbed themselves the American Olympic Drinking Team. In 1998, Sinatra passed away at the age of 82, leaving behind a legacy that intertwined with his affinity for alcohol. He was laid to rest with a bottle of Jack Daniels in his casket, a fitting tribute to his enduring relationship with the beloved whiskey. Dean Martin, the epitome of coolness, Dean Martin once quipped, I feel sorry for people who don't drink. When they wake up in the morning, that's as good as they're going to feel all day. Much of Martin's onstage persona revolved around the image of a charming, affable drunkard. However, his daughter and close friends have asserted that it was all an act, with Martin often having nothing more than apple juice in his glass. It was the mere presence of a drink and cigarette that elevated his image to legendary status. Men aspired to emulate him while women longed to be in his company. Despite his public persona, Martin was a devoted father, always present for dinner, and typically limited himself to just one cocktail in the evening with his wife. While his career was closely associated with alcohol, Martin seemed to navigate the fine line between indulgence and restraint, knowing when to rein it in. He passed away in 1995 at the age of 78, leaving behind a legacy of charm and charisma that transcended his onstage persona. Peter O'Toole. It's surprising to fathom that someone with striking, vibrant blue eyes like Peter O'Toole would be counted among Hollywood's foremost alcoholics. In a candid interview with David Letterman, O'Toole attributed his drinking habits to societal norms of his generation, where alcohol consumption was commonplace, regardless of daily obligations. He even asserted that alcohol served to enhance his performances on the silver screen. One memorable anecdote involves the filming of Lawrence of Arabia, specifically the scene depicting a camel raid. Interestingly, both O'Toole and his co-star, Omar Sharif, harbored a fear of camels and opted to remain inebriated throughout the entire sequence. This choice, often dubbed liquid courage, speaks to the lengths actors might go to overcome their fears. O'Toole chuckles at inquiries about the scene, admitting he has no recollection of it due to his intoxicated state. Cary Grant Cary Grant, known for his suave demeanor on screen, battled alcoholism in the 1950s and sought treatment to overcome his addiction. His journey to sobriety took an unconventional turn when his doctor prescribed a then-new drug, LSD. Grant found solace and enlightenment in the psychedelic experiences induced by LSD, embracing the profound journeys it offered. He even introduced the drug to some of his friends, including Judy Balaban, daughter of Paramount's president, who remarked, I figured if it was good enough for Cary Grant, it was good enough for me. It's believed that Grant underwent approximately 100 sessions of LSD therapy as part of his treatment. Although unconventional, 
This approach reshaped his perspective on life and contributed to his overall happiness. Grant lived contentedly until his passing at the age of 82, leaving behind a legacy that extended beyond the silver screen to include his personal triumph over addiction. Richard Burton Can you believe that at the peak of his alcoholism in the 70s, Burton was consuming two to three bottles of vodka daily? He gained a notorious reputation in Hollywood for his unabashed heavy drinking, showing little concern for public perception. In fact, he once brazenly informed a director that he would abstain from drinking on their film, only to clarify that this meant limiting himself to just one bottle of vodka for the day. Burton even asserted that he considered himself sober when consuming two bottles, reserving the label of drinking for three or more. Despite his personal struggles, Burton delivered an unforgettable performance in the 1966 film Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, portraying a hard-drinking college professor. His stellar portrayal earned him an Oscar nomination. However, his alcoholism continued to plague him, evident during the filming of The Klansman in 1974, where he had to film many scenes while seated or lying down due to his impaired balance. Following the completion of filming, Burton took the courageous step of checking himself into a lockdown rehabilitation facility to confront his addiction. Amidst a tumultuous divorce from Elizabeth Taylor, he finally committed to sobriety. Unfortunately, the toll of his years of excessive drinking had already taken its toll. Burton suffered from cirrhosis of the liver and kidney disease, tragically passing away in 1984 at the age of just 58. Elizabeth Taylor, Elizabeth Taylor, renowned for her beauty and talent on the silver screen, grappled with alcoholism and addiction to painkillers for many years. In 1983, she made headlines by becoming the first celebrity to voluntarily seek treatment at the Betty Ford Center. This rehabilitation facility, founded by Betty Ford, wife of U.S. President Gerald Ford, was established to provide help to individuals struggling with addiction. Inspired by Betty Ford's own journey to recovery in 1978, Taylor's courageous decision to confront her addiction not only marked a turning point in her personal life, but also had a profound impact on countless others silently battling similar struggles. By openly acknowledging her challenges and seeking help, she helped to destigmatize addiction and shed light on the path to recovery. Freed from the grip of addiction, Taylor discovered a new purpose beyond acting, advocating for AIDS awareness, prevention, and research. With her newfound platform, she became a powerful advocate for those affected by the AIDS epidemic using her fame and influence to raise awareness and support for research and treatment efforts. In this way, Elizabeth Taylor's journey from addiction to advocacy symbolizes a journey from darkness to hope, inspiring millions of Americans to seek help and offering hope to those in need. Her legacy extends far beyond the silver screen, leaving an indelible mark on the fight against addiction and the quest for a cure for AIDS. It's sad and, no pun intended, sobering to learn of the enormous negative effects alcohol has on so many of us. Perhaps fame makes the liquid courage seem even more normalized. Today's list is just a small sample of the stars who have been known to have alcohol problems. Some of them got the help they needed to get sober, others sadly did not. That's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.